There are so many incredible things in our universe that are worth visiting, but the trouble is our universe is enormous, and most of these incredible things are extremely far away from us. Take our closest neighbour, the moon. We see it every day, and perhaps it seems not so far, but it's still 384,000 kilometres away from us. If we could fly to the moon on a plane, it would take us about 15 days, and I certainly don't want to spend that long in economy. But the moon is our nearest neighbour. Going further out, the distances become much more extreme. At its closest, Jupiter is 778 million kilometres away from us. It takes years for our robotic travellers like Juno to cross space and reach the stormy giant. But the time it takes to cross space depends on how fast you're travelling. The faster you go, or the higher your velocity, the less time it takes to cross space. As one of the fastest spacecraft ever launched, the Voyager 1 probe speeds away from our solar system at an incredible 17 kilometers per second. So not every hour, or even every minute, but every second, Voyager travels 17 kilometers further away from us into the depths of space. Since its launch in 1977, Voyager 1 has traveled almost 22 billion kilometers. But this incredible distance is only just outside of our solar system and it took 43 years to get there. If we were to consider our nearest neighbouring star system, Alpha Centauri, which is only 41 trillion kilometres, or 4.3 light years away from us, it would take our Voyager 77,000 years to get there. And that's simply just too long. These distances are inconceivably large to us, but on the grand scale of galaxies, everything so far has been insignificant. To the Milky Way, the distance from our Sun to Alpha Centauri is like the size of a virus to us. Simply put, galaxies are titanic, stretching for hundreds of thousands of light years across and with millions to billions of light years between galaxies. It almost seems impossible for us to explore our incredible universe. The distances are vast and our ships slow, but is there a way to go faster? and allow us to actually explore the universe. Currently, most of our spacecraft are powered by chemical rockets. They take volatile fuel, mix them together, and let the controlled explosion push them forward. Chemical rockets can go fast, but they have a problem. The faster you want to go, the more fuel you need to burn. But if you add more fuel, your rocket is heavier, so you need more fuel to carry the fuel you added to go faster. So heavy fuel, like what chemical rockets use, won't get you to Alpha Centauri. Even if you adopt the Kerbal approach of just add more boosters, you just wouldn't be able to get fast enough. The amount of energy you get per kilogram or energy density is just too low for chemical rockets. Well, explosions seem to work, so perhaps we just need to use bigger explosions. Maybe we should use explosives that should have no place here on Earth, like nuclear weapons. On Earth, these terrible explosions have the capacity to end civilizations, but in space, far from the Earth, their explosive force could be used to propel spacecraft to incredible speeds. These nuclear-powered rockets would periodically detonate nuclear weapons behind them, pushing the rocket forward with each explosion. Incredibly, this bumpy method of propulsion would accelerate a spacecraft up to 30,000 kilometers per second, or 10% the speed of light. A nuclear pulse ship traveling at 10% the speed of light could make a trip to Alpha Centauri in just 44 years, much less than the 77,000 years needed by Voyager 1. Just 44 years for humans to visit the nearest star system. Although interstellar travel would be the best use for nuclear weapons, this still isn't fast enough. So is there a way to go faster and really start sailing between the stars? Well, a sail might be a good answer. Although there's no wind in space to push against a sail, there is a lot of light, which in its own peculiar way can push things. You see, when light gets absorbed or reflected off something, it gives a tiny push to the thing it hit. Now this push is really lightweight, so it won't be knocking anyone down. And we know this of course because we don't get flattened in the sunshine, and that's probably 
for the best. On the Earth, the push of light doesn't matter, but in the vacuum of space, it can make things move. Since solar sails use light, they don't need to carry their own fuel. But the problem is, the further away the solar sail gets from the sun, the less light there is to push it. But you don't need to rely on sunlight. Any light will do. In fact, this is the basis of the Breakthrough Starshot project. They plan to make an enormous but lightweight solar sail powered by an incredibly high power laser array here on Earth. With enough laser power, a microscopic satellite could be pushed to speeds of up to 60,000 kilometers per second, or 20% the speed of light. At this incredible speed, a microsatellite could sail across to Alpha Centauri in just 20 years, ignoring, of course, the problem of slowing down again on the other side. Both nuclear pulse engines and light sails can make incredibly fast ships, ships that are thousands of times faster than our speeding Voyager 1 but it's still slow, only a fraction of the speed of light. And even then, the speed of light isn't really that fast at 300,000 kilometers per second, compared to the trillions of kilometers we want to travel. Even if we had ships that traveled at the speed of light, it would take many years to travel between the stars, in the reference frame of us here on Earth. If we really want to be able to explore space, we need to go faster. But the problem is, the universe won't let things with mass travel faster than the speed of light. Light speed is the speed limit of our universe. It's not that you'd get an astronomically large fine from cosmic cops if they caught you breaking it. It's just the nature of the universe. But are there ways that we can bend the rules and essentially go faster than the speed of light? Well, perhaps. There's a theoretical drive called the Alcubierre drive that uses a loophole to go faster than the speed of light. You see, the trick is the Albuquerque drive doesn't push the ship, it bends and warps the space around it to move a little bubble of space at speeds faster than light. This cheat works because the ship is still at rest within the warp bubble, where space in front of the ship is compressed and space behind expanded, essentially moving the bubble through space. You can think of it like the warp engines in Star Trek. On the ship, it would feel like nothing is happening, all the while the warp bubble speeds through space faster than light to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no one has gone before. Although exciting, the Albuquerque drive is still very much theoretical and may require more energy to bend space than what we could ever hope to produce. But it could be a way for us to cross the vast voids of space and truly explore our universe. While it may seem like science fiction for us today, today's science fiction inspires tomorrow's science, and tomorrow's science may let us wander amongst the stars. Since the last video on the beauty of galaxies, we've reached a small milestone. 500 subscribers. Although it may not seem like much, it means a lot to me to see the channel grow and see people enjoying the videos I make. And this is thanks to David Kipping from Cool Worlds. He shared that video on his YouTube channel, so you should check it out if you haven't watched his videos already. And I'm really thankful for everyone who saw the share and decided to check out my video and then, of course, subscribe. It really gives me a lot of motivation to keep working towards making more videos and try and show more of the beauty of our universe. If you like these videos, remember to leave a like and leave a comment. I do try to read all of the comments and share them with your friends if you want to. Um, the more the merrier. <laughs>